Before we start, if you have already watched my fire sprinkler system video series, then you will easily understand today's design. If not, I strongly recommend watching that first and then coming back to this video. Type PDF in the comment section and email me so that I will share free design PDF with you. So in today's lecture, we are designing a sprinkler system for an office building. And please remember whether the project is commercial, industrial or even a warehouse. If you follow the design philosophy which I am going to explain you, you can easily design any sprinkler system in the correct way. So let's get started. Whenever we are asked to design sprinkler system, the first step is to review the architecture for the particular building. So in our case, we are having an office building. We need to thoroughly go through the architecture layouts of this particular building, section details and also fall ceiling plans. We need to get an idea about the architecture without that we cannot properly develop the sprinkler design. So while reviewing the architecture, we need to understand the application of the building like is it an office building or hospital or a warehouse. We need to get the clear picture about this. We cannot start blindly the design before reviewing the architecture drawings. So after reviewing the architecture, we must check the local building codes. What is the purpose? Because the code decides whether sprinklers are required or not for that specific building. So in our case, we have checked the building code and decided that the sprinkler system is required for this office building. However, in some scenarios, if building code says like sprinkler system is not required and we still design them, then it's simply a waste of money for the client. So this step is very, very important. We need to confirm that the project actually requires a sprinkler system. Once we confirm that the sprinklers are required for that particular building, we need to identify occupancy hazard classification as per NFPA 13. We need to ask ourselves whether that particular building comes under light hazard or ordinary hazard group 1 or 2 or extra hazard group 1 or 2. We need to check NFPA 13 to get the confirmation about the hazard classification. In case if we select the wrong hazard classification, so for example, our office comes under light hazard, but we selected ordinary hazard, then it will impact the fire pump capacity and the pipe sizing and it will affect the entire system. So we need to check the hazard classification properly and also one more important thing we need to decide what type of system we are using like wet system or dry system or pre-action system deluge system there are various types of sprinkler system so in our case we consider wet pipe sprinkler system so so you might ask like for example office building comes under light hazard but there are couple of rooms which are classified under different hazard classification then those rooms needs to be spaced or those room sprinklers needs to be spaced according to that particular room hazard so this has to be taken care while designing the sprinkler system or while positioning the sprinklers in that specific building or rooms so before we begin placing the sprinklers for any building, we need to make sure maximum coverage area per sprinkler for each occupancy, minimum and maximum distance between the sprinklers, minimum distance from the walls to the sprinklers and type of sprinklers to be used so in our case 
we have office building and all rooms comes under light hazard if you have seen that architecture which i have uh, i'm going to cover in the future slides as well so all these rooms comes under light hazard occupancy so our coverage area for all these rooms will be based on light hazard occupancy classification so maximum distance between sprinkler to sprinkler can be 4.6 meter however the coverage area per each sprinkler cannot exceed 20 square meter as a thumb rule we will consider 16 square meter per sprinkler since we will have uh, some lights or some ac grills and all the stuff so during execution it might uh, i mean uh, the installation contractor might you know adjust the spacing of the sprinkler so in order to have some factor of safety as a thumb rule we will consider 16 square meter per one sprinkler and the minimum distance from the wall to the sprinkler shall be 4 inch or 100 mm so and the minimum distance between the sprinkler for light hazard will be 1.8 meter before we locate the sprinkler or position the sprinklers in any room you need to know these basic rules for more clarity i'll consider a small example and uh, we will consider four sprinklers for a particular room and we are spacing the distance between sprinklers in one sp specific direction as 4.6 meters then the other direction cannot be 4.6 because we must meet the maximum coverage area requirement as well so we need to divide 20 square meter with the 4.6 meter which we consider the spacing in one particular direction so we will get about 4.3 meter so this cannot be 4.6 meter this has to be maximum 4.3 meters so one side if we consider 4.6 the other side has to be 4.3 then only the maximum coverage area requirements will meet the nfpa 13 requirements so whenever we design sprinklers or position the sprinklers we need to design in this particular way now that all basics are clear we can start the actual design for our building please note i missed most important point in previous slides and hence i request you to check the entire video to get full concept and full understanding of sprinkler system design so in this slide i'm going to explain that missed point so you know the office building but you don't know whether this particular building requires a new fire pump or whether we need to consider a tapping point from the existing fire water network if you don't understand i will explain in a minute just be patient so in our case we will consider a new fire pump so our demand requirements for this office building will be fulfilled by the new fire pump but in some scenarios like you have a temporary facility and they have few buildings already installed with a fire pump as well and these building sprinkler systems are served by the single fire pump unit so now the client wants to expand and they want to add new buildings in this project site so now you might ask for these two buildings we need to have a new fire pump or can we take the tapping from the existing fire water network so this can be decided by the designer by coordinating with the client if the designer after performing the hydraulic calculations if he can justify the existing fire pump will suffice the demand requirements of the new buildings then we can just take the tapping from the existing fire water network otherwise we need to 
install one more fire pump so we'll not go into all those stuff so in our case for our office building we'll just consider a new fire pump also please note you need to prepare zoning layouts and also select the riser location sprinkler riser locations as per I mean the zonings has to be defined based on NFPA 13 and the riser locations can be coordinated with the other services and we can place our riser points as well wherever required. In next slide I am going to consider and place the sprinklers on the exact office building layouts. Once I place the sprinklers I am going to consider the main line and then I will draw the branch lines and then I will do the pipe sizing based on the pipe schedule method however I will verify with hydraulic calculations whether those pipes are okay or not and then I will take the routing of my main line till the new fire pump so all this will be explained in the next slide now the wait is over we are going to distribute the sprinklers in this particular uh, building so if you want to position the sprinklers i can share you the pdf of this building so that you can place the sprinklers do the pipe routing put the pipe sizing and send back to me so that i can review and give you the feedback for 100 percent free of charge so just i want to make sure you know the design concept as per NFPA 13 requirements. So what I am going to do, I am going to put the sprinklers in each and every room as per the occupancy hazard classification. Also I will try to put the riser location, select the riser location after coordinating with the MEP services. Now for example I coordinated with the other services as well and I found like uh, this particular location you can see on your screen this particular location is suitable for our sprinkler riser so our pump is somewhere else from the pump room the piping will come and connect to our riser from the riser we are going to draw the main line and then we draw the branch lines which will be connected to the sprinkler so if you look at the screen i'm just if you look at on right hand side i'm just trying to place the pump row here we'll install all the pumps, piping, fitting and all stuff. And then from the piping, I mean from the pump room, the pipe will go or will reach the building sprinkler riser. In sprinkler riser, since this is a wet system, we are going to install alarm check wall and gate wall. So after that, we will raise the pipe and it will enter into the buildings. So this is how we need to draw the main line. So I will just try to put the sprinklers. Now if you look at uh, the screen, just give me a moment. I'll put sprinkler here, here. So two sprinklers will suffice this particular room as per occupancy hazard classification. Here one sprinkler is enough. In printer also one sprinkler. If you have a single false ceiling, there is no wall here. Till the false ceiling we can put only one sprinkler otherwise consider two sprinklers in storeroom consider one sprinkler in pantry one sprinkler here in workstation i make sure the maximum and minimum distance between the sprinklers distance from the wall and so on all this stuff so once you know the basic fundamentals you just you can uh, you know put the sprinklers so in my meeting room i'll put the sprinkler in workstation i'll put one sprinkler in corridor for example i'll put like six sprinklers so now all these sprinklers has to be connected to the riser piping now i'm going to draw our main line so from the riser i'll just draw the main line once again so this is the main line for example i am putting the end cap here so now we just need to put the branch piping that's it so if you look at the screen i'm just putting the branch piping so for this printer i'll consider this branch piping can be done as per our own experience you can consider but the pipe sizing shall be based on the pipe schedule method initially and that has to be verified from the hydraulic calculation so branching i'm just i will consider in this way here 
and from here i will consider the branch like this for these two sprinklers i will consider the branch in this way and i think everything is covered now here if you look at the toilet and storeroom i'll consider in this way the branch lines and what we need to do we need to put the pipe sizes based on the number of sprinklers if you don't know how to put you can watch my pipe schedule method video you will be able to understand how to put the pipe sizes for the entire sprinkler system layout now you have done everything just you need to put the dimensions from the wall or distance or dimensions between the sprinklers just to verify whether those sprinkler positions are accurate or not also you need to put the invert levels of the piping what is the pipe level what is the sprinkler level what is the ceiling height you should put all those details as well you need to make one design data table in that you need to provide the building height and so on all those stuff as well apart from that from this riser i'll just uh, highlight the main line this can be our underground or above ground pipe so now we need to define the piping as well the pipe is it black steel schedule 40 or cpvc pipe or pvc pipe or what kind of pipe the type of material also has to be provided in the design data or in the drawing also we need to make sure notes to be provided accordingly as per nfpa 13 requirements the pump room has to be designed separately you can watch my pump room fire pump design as well for in-depth knowledge you can use this philosophy for any project and uh, if you have any queries you can definitely ask me so that i will review and if i know definitely i will help you out in your projects as well i hope you understand today's video the final step is pending i will explain you in the last slide so everything is finished now we need to prepare the package so the package shall include like basis of design what are the considerations we have uh, done during our design second we need to provide the hydraulic calculations along with the isometric for the remotest hazard area i have entire playlist on hydraulic calculations as well you can watch that after that you need to add the complete firefighting layouts and also material technical submittals if you are a contractor you need to add what kind of material you are using what brand you have used in your particular project and if there are any other requirements from the client you need to add all those as well and you need to make one separate package the documentation has to be prepared clearly and it should be maintained because you need to get the design approval so in order to get the design approval you need to have the justification documents so i hope you understand uh, today's lecture if you like my videos make sure to hit the subscription button and also comment so that it will motivate me to make new videos so and uh, it will be helpful for you as well as for me thank you so much bye